How are you guys doing? Thanks for checking out this video. We're going to look at the 2024 Ranger playtest now from Playtest Packet 6. Got the regular uh, 2014 Ranger here on the left and the Playtest Ranger here on the right. Looking at the Ranger table, we see a bunch of new stuff here. Deft Explorer, that's from Tasha's. Spellcasting at first level. Weapon Mastery at first level. Favorite Enemy moves up to second. Roving, that's from Tasha's. Conjure Barrage gives you a spell always. Uh, Deft Explorer improvement. Tireless at 10th from Tasha's. Nature's Veil is an update of um, Vanish. And then Conjure Volley, another free spell all the time. Conjure Volley, I think, and Conjure Barrage come from the Hunter, and the Hunter gets different things to replace those. Spell slots, uh, getting spells starting at first level. Prepared spells, of course, having a fixed number of prepared spells. One big change from the first playtest they no longer remove concentration of my hunter's mark, and they said that was it was overpowered in play tests. So I'm surprised that is true or that happened for them in play tests. But uh, let's go through this. Starting equipment: 150 gold for uh, ranger. Everything else is the same as current rangers. Ranger class features: we have the Deft Explorer. This is largely the same as it is in Tasha's, with a little bit of tweaks here and there. One of your proficiencies and a skill that appears in the ranger skill list you get expertise with. You get two types of terrain in which you have advantage on intelligence nature checks and advantage on wisdom survival checks. And this actually came from the natural explorer and the regular ranger. And then whenever you finish a long rest, you can replace them. This seems odd to me. Why not just give rangers this all the time in all terrain and all, yeah, all types of terrain? Because, um, you know, day one, hey, I know what we're doing in the forest here. Day two. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't remember how to track through forests. That seems really, really hot. All right. Uh, first level spell casting. They have this primal spell list. Like they did with the Paladin, they get, they can replace one spell and they finish a long rest. So this is odd. You have to track how many days of long rest you've had if you want to replace all your spells. Uh, might just hand wave this in a campaign unless it's like an adventure that goes over a set number of days. Then that might come up. And they use the Druidic Focus. They gain Weapon Mastery at first level with two kinds of weapons. And of course, you can change that. And that's, again, another weird thing. Hey, I used to know how to use this bow, but now I don't. Um, favorite enemy, always have the Hunter's Bark spell prepared. So they used to take away having to use Concentration, but now it's always prepared. And you can cast it, your Wisdom Modifier times, freely, at least once, with uh, per long rest. So you'll be able to cast a lot, because you'll be... You'll be getting knocked out and losing a lot. We'll see. Ranger subclass. Uh, they got the Beastmaster, Bay Wanderer from Tasha's, Gloomstalker, or Hunter. At 6th level, they have Roving. Speed increasing by 10 feet while not wearing heavy armor. And Climb Speed and Swim Speed. That is just immensely powerful, all of that. Rangers can move all over Battlefield now with climbing and swimming and, and being very fast, which is cool. Then we have ninth level Conjure Barrage. Always have Conjure Barrage prepared. Uh, ninth level, they also get Deft Explorer Improvement. And they get to get one more expertise and two more types of terrain. Again, I'd rework that a little bit. Tenth level Tireless, they get uh, temporary hit points. And they can decrease their exhaustion. I like both of those things for you know the scene where Strider is running and running and running. Now, the funny thing is it wasn't just Strider. Is also like Legolas and Gimli, so it's not just uh, rangers in that scene. Unless all three of those guys were rangers. I don't think they were, though. Nature's Veil at 14th level. As a bonus action, you can give yourself the invisible condition until the end of your next turn. Use that, your Wisdom Mod, per long rest. Wisdom Mod's going to be important for a ranger to get all these powers. Conjure Volley at 17th level. Feral Senses at 18th level. I like that. They kind of... Feral Senses used to do... Um, a bunch of weird things. And now they just kind of leverage blindsight for it. I think that's a good idea. And finally, Foe Slayer. Um, when your attack roll misses the target of your Hunter's Mark, you can add your Wisdom Modifier to the attack roll, potentially turning it into a hit. So this is... Basically, you might as well always add your Wisdom Mod. Right? Um, it's not like a once-per-day thing or once-per-round thing or limited number of uses thing. So it's weird how they worded that. <clears throat> In addition, whenever you hit that target with an attack roll and deal damage to it, you can add your wisdom modifier to the damage. So again, always. That's the base ranger class. Let's look at the ranger subclasses. 
The first one we have is Beastmaster, which always felt underpowered and rarely used. They have Primal Companion at third level, just to rename for their Beast Companion, or Ranger's Companion, they called it. And it's specified to be friendly to your companions. They have stat blocks for them here, so you'll get, you know... I'm surprised they didn't do the stat blocks for the Druid, because this makes it so they don't have to hunt through the monster manuals to find an adequate beast for them to have as their companion. I think this is a good idea. Plus, they can throw in some cool little side things with it. Um, it acts during your turn, instead of uh, having its own initiative. It will move on its own, use its reaction on its own. If you don't command it, it'll dodge. If you take a bonus action to command it on your turn, you can tell it to do something different. You can also sacrifice one of your attacks when you take the attack action to have it attack, or to have it take the attack action. Um, if you're incapacitated, it'll take any action it wants. If it die, has died within the last hour, you can use your action to touch it and expend a spell slot first level or, or higher, and it'll return after one minute with all its hit points. <laughs> Interestingly, it doesn't say anywhere in here that they die zero hit points. So, I wonder if they can go to death saves. Okay, uh, it vanishes if you die as well. I should highlight that. So that is the Beastmaster Companion. And at 7th level, it gets exceptional training, can, where the Beast can also command it to take the dash, disengage, dodge, or help actions as a bonus action. So you can tell it, hey, attack, and help this person. Oh, no, those are actions. So, huh... I wonder if their wording's right here. So you have to do a bonus action to command it. When you use your bonus action, you can tell it to do these things as a bonus action. So it could attack and help on the same turn. That's pretty strong. It could help and dash. It could do disengage and dodge. It could do... Because any of these things it can do is as its action. Interesting. And you tighten up that wording so it's real clear that you use your bonus action, it gets its action and a bonus action. Um, and it can do force damage when you're summoned level instead of its normal damage, so bypassing magic resistance. Bestial Fury. Um, the first time each turn it hits a creature under the effect of your Hunter's Mark spell, it deals extra force damage equal to the bonus damage of that spell. So that's pretty cool. And 15th level chair spells unchanged from previous Beastmaster. Bloom Stalker. Bloom Stalkers made some of the most powerful builds with their Umbral Sight exploit. Let's look at how they've changed in this version. So they still have spells. You noticed that the Beastmaster did not have spells. We'll see two of these um, subclasses don't and two do have spells. So not all rangers will have extra spells. Dread Ambusher, they kind of tweaked this a little bit, where you get to do this extra D8 psychic damage once on your turn when you hit a target, plus they have to make a save or gain Frightened. That's all pretty strong. Um, you can do this, uh, your Wisdom modifier times per long rest, though, so it's pretty uh, few times. If you compare that to, like, uh, the Fey Wanderer, it's doing a D4 psychic damage with every hit. Oh, once per turn. But there's no limit to it. So I think the limitation will keep the Dread Ambusher from um, using that too often. Initiative bonus, you add your wisdom modifier to the roll, just to give you advantage on the roll. Um, oh no, it gave you a wisdom modifier bonus. Okay, so that's the same. Um, roll sight, I never liked this. Dark vision out to a range of 60 feet or add 60 feet to your dark vision and creatures entirely relying on dark vision to see you, you're invisible. Well, that's great. Um, I would change that. Take this take this opportunity to change that. But if you're DM and you're playing and the players are doing that, I guess it's important to remember most civilized societies underground would use light sources, not rely solely on dark vision because in dark vision, everything's black and white and you have disadvantage on perception. So... Imagine living in a grayed out world where you can't hardly see stuff. It'd be no fun. So keep that in mind if you're DM. Uh, light up any civilized areas. But uh, monsters are in trouble with, uh, with uh, gloom stalkers around in the dark. Iron Mind. Um, that's the same, I believe, as it was before. 
uh, stalker's flurry. When you have the frightened effect, when you use the frightened effect, you can do extra stuff with it. Make another attack with the same weapon against a different creature within five feet of the original target, and that is within the weapon's range. Each creature within 10 feet of the target must make a wisdom saving throw or become frightened. I wonder if this other attack you make does the extra damage and does the frighten. It doesn't say. It should clarify that. I would think they wanted that, but they certainly didn't say it. Shadow Dodge. When a creature makes an attack roll against you, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on that roll. If it misses, you can teleport. So the teleport part is new from Shadow Dodge. Made it a little bit more powerful. Okay, and then the third uh, class is the Hunter. We saw this in the first playtest packet for the Ranger. And what they've done is they've gone back and they've added in, um, or they let you go back and retake these defensive tactics and Hunter spray tactics. Horde Breaker changed a little bit. Let's look at the Hunter here on the left. There's the Hunter. Horde Breaker now, you make an attack with a weapon, they say. And the other creatures you attack have to be creatures you haven't attacked this turn. Retaliator is when a giant creature attacks you. Um, although it's not giant. Um, it can be any creature. So it, they got rid of giant killer. Made it a little bit more broadly useful, though, for a ranger in most fights. Because oftentimes you're not fighting large creatures. And you can use your reaction to make one weapon attack. One attack with a weapon against that creature, whether or not it hit you. Hunter's lore. Um... So while a creature is marked by your hunter's mark, you know whether that creature has any damage or condition immunities, damage resistance, or damage vulnerabilities. And if the creature has any, you know what they are. So that's really cool. I like that. Defensive tactics. These kind of changed up a little bit. Um, they have evasion now. They have hunter's leap now. Enemy you can see enters a space within five feet of you. You can use your reaction to move up to half your speed without provoking opportunity to attacks. And then uncanny dodge. So, Evasion and Kennedy Dodge on that 11th level, they can do another Prey type, and at 15th level, another Defense type. So, at 11th level, they used to get Volley, um, or Whirlwind and Attack, and now all Rangers get those. Um, although, it does take the Spell Slot to do it for them. And then, Spear, Hunter's Defense, this is when they could have got Evasion or Uncanny Dodge. Now, they could get those as early as 7th, and again, one of them at 15th. That's the hunter. And the other one is the from Tasha's um from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything is the Fey Wanderer, which has spells, so it's one of the spell subclasses. And it's pretty cool. I've seen these a couple times being played. Uh, a lot of fun. And should be, you know, matching the current rules. So there it is. That is the Ranger. If you guys like that, next one we're gonna look at is I think the last one of the playtest, and it's the Rogue. I hope you come back for that. Thanks for watching, guys.